Hello, friends, and happy November 3rd, Election Day here in the United States of America. I just got finished voting and just hopped back in my truck, got ready to drive um, back uptown and check things out at uh, Scripps College Communication and Schoonover Center and see how things are going there. Before I take off, I, I, I had a thought that I, that I think would be really good to share with, um, with you with uh, those who, particularly those who are part of our church, Oasis Church, I, is who I'm gearing this thought to. Any, and anyone else, of course, who uh, is a Christian, anyone who is a follower of Christ and um, claims to actually love and want to serve and honor Jesus with your life. You know, on the back end of voting, it feels good to be able to contribute. And um, something that strikes me is that uh, there's like a relief. It's, it's, it's wild. There's like a relief of knowing that um, I have contributed to society um, and I'm going to do the, and I've done the best that I can to select someone that I believe um, would, would do the best um, for our nation. But regardless, it doesn't matter who's on that ballot. If Jesus Christ isn't on there, we're never going to find someone who is absolutely perfect to be put on that ballot as someone to get behind. And so we understand that, that it, regardless of who you vote for, everyone is going to be flawed. Everyone in this, play, in this world is going to be flawed. If you or I were on the ballot, someone would find a reason not to vote for us. Um, because, uh, you know, it, it's, just, it's just the way of the world. It's the way it is. Because of sin, we're never going to escape that. But something that I would like to challenge and encourage all of us in is this. Uh, after today, uh, maybe not tonight, maybe not even tomorrow morning or even the rest of this week, who knows, it could take a couple of weeks to, for us to figure out who actually is going to be the next president of the United States or who will continue to be the president of the United States. Um, there will be a winner. There will be a winner, one winner, and there will be two, three losers, depending on how many people are on your ballot. Um, people who did not, who do not win. And that will be clear. There will be a winner and there will be a loser. And in any, and in any competition and in any race and anything that is, um, that is, that is set up like an election like this, where people are deciding there, there must be a, uh, a recognition of grace in both winning and in losing. And um, that goes not just for the candidates, but it goes for those of us who voted for those candidates as well. Some of you will win and others of you will lose. And we remember to extend grace and love regardless of which side of that your candidate, the one that you voted for, falls on. That's the first thing I wanted to mention. But the second thing I wanted to mention is this. You know, we live in a free country where we are able to contribute to the process of who leads this nation. And we're able to vote and we contribute in that way. And, and perhaps more than ever in our lifetime did we get reminded of our responsibility and our opportunity and privilege to be able to do that. Um, it seemed like uh, voting and remind, being reminded to vote was, was a major uh, sermon that was being preached to us uh, every single day for a long time there. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's, that's not a bad thing. But what we have to remember is this. You really cannot control, outside of your one vote, you can't control who is going to be the leader of this nation who is going to be the person that is, that, is, that is in charge of leading our nation. That is not up to you. You can't control that. But what you can control and what you have full control over is who you are, 
what kind of person you are, who you're going to be when you wake up tomorrow and how you're going to behave and what you're going to do, what you're going to say, how you're going to smile or frown or complain or encourage or tear down or build up. All of those things are within your control. And that is something that you can always choose. And I, that is something that I pray that you will always choose regardless of what happens that's outside of your control. You can choose to be the person that you want to be. The president of the United States is not going to control your life. I don't care what people tell you. I don't care what, what, kind, of, uh, what kind of fear is being driven into you that, that the leader of, the, 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 of this nation has enough power to control your life. It just simply isn't true. Every single day, when you wake up and your head pops off of that pillow, you get to decide the kind of person you're going to be. You get to decide how you're going to treat your neighbors. You get to decide what kind of employee you're going to be. You get to decide what kind of husband, what kind of wife, what kind of father, what kind of child, what kind of mother, what kind of person you're going to be every single day. And do not let anyone take that away from you. I don't care if someone from, that is a leader of this nation or the leader of any other part of this world tries to remove that from you. You still get to decide that. You still get to decide that. Even those who have gone through tremendous, horrendous trials in their lives still cling on to that truth that they get to decide who they're going to be don't let anyone strip that from you unfortunately i'm seeing a lot of people in this nation giving permission for that to be stripped from them throwing up their hands and acting like things are out of control and things aren't totally out of control you get to control you you do you no one can do that for you. And that's what it means to be an American. That's what it means to live in this country. That's what it means to have the freedom to choose the person that you would like to see lead. And if that person is selected, fantastic. But you know what? You can still choose to be happy whether that person's selected or not. You don't have to choose to be unhappy. You can choose to be happy. You can choose to live your life the way you like to live it regardless of whose name is on that line tomorrow for President of the United States. My prayer for you, my prayer for us, for all of us, for the church as a whole, and for us locally, those who fellowship together as a church here, my prayer is that you will never allow someone to take that away. That your identity will not be found in being a Democrat. It will not be found in being a Republican. It will not be found in being a Libertarian, being independent, whoever you align yourself with politically. That your identity will not be found in anything except one thing and one thing alone, and that is Jesus Christ. Because regardless of who is president, tomorrow when you wake up, Jesus Christ is King and Lord. And as long as that's true in your life, you can smile.